Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be. My name is Solomon, and I would like to welcome you all to the first inaugural edition of the Adoption Review within the Lighthouse Report. I am going to do my best to showcase to you all of the adoption initiatives occurring across the globe from the highest levels of government all the way down to the smallest levels of business. To start with today, we're going to get into this Project Phoenix, which is still ongoing, funded by the European Union, essentially almost 11 million euros, uh, that ends August 31st of this year. Now, this is Project Phoenix. It is a European, fun a European Union funded collaborative project improving the cybersecurity of the European Electrical Power Energy System, aka the Smart Grid. Phoenix aims to offer a cyber, sh cyber shield armor to the European Electrical Power Energy System infrastructure, enabling cooperative detection of large scale cyber human security and privacy incidents and attacks guarantee the continuity of operations and minimize cascading effects in the infrastructure of the smart grid itself. All right, so why do we care about this? Dealing in blockchain, distributed ledger technology, crypto, digital assets, right? Uh, we care about this because this essentially is underpinned by a protocol that is called the Interledger Protocol, which was, which was invented by Ripple and gifted to the W3C. Now, the W3C essentially operates, maintains, all of the rules dealing in the internet itself, like literally the internet. Um, so we can see right here, Project Phoenix. Now this document came out in early June. This is the uh, European Union Blockchain Forum. This is dealing uh, across multiple different sec uh, sectors in energy. Um, but let me get into um, the portion we wanna talk about here. Now it talks about cross uh, ledger interoperations. Um, all cross-ledger operations performed by Interledger are atomic. The implementation of Interledger components or the component can enable connection between various distributed ledger technologies, including Quorum, Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Indy, Ethereum, KSI. Now, the Interledger component can be utilized for the following application scenarios. Storing data hash is great. Transferring data among different ledger types, great. That's dealing in interoperability, obviously. Um, what we really care about is exchanging digital assets, um, which could deal in cryptocurrencies. To achieve this, Interledger benefits from hash time lock contracts to automate the process of trading value between distributed ledger technologies. That value obviously, now if you're aware of what the Interledger protocol is, it's a value agnostic protocol. It doesn't have to be crypto, but it can be crypto. Um, and you know, it's a European Union funded, uh, funded initiative literally talking about providing a cyber shield armor to the, the smart grid. Um, very interesting, still ongoing, just found this in June, so wanted to share it with you all. Adoption doesn't stop there, ladies and gentlemen. We've got Deloitte essentially partnering with NYDIG um, to help businesses to roll out Bitcoin products, including banking products, loyalty and rewards, employee benefits, etc. Now, NYDIG last year in May partnered with Fidelity Information Services to offer Bitcoin via hundreds of banking organizations. Wells Fargo and JP Morgan also started offering Bitcoin to clients via NYDIG managed funds. If you want to check out NYDIG, here's the website. Talking about Deloitte, Deloitte recently in June, June 1st, I think it was this year. Um, so last month provided this, um, this study that they performed in last December, which is across the retail sector. Now, if you read through this document here, uh, they essentially interviewed 2,000 senior level executives across the entire spectrum of retail. So all sorts of different sectors within retail. Very interesting that 85% of those senior level executives expect that digital currency payments will be ubiquitous or mainstream or widespread in the retail industry in five years. So that's that puts us out to 2026. Um, priority of enabling cryptocurrencies, 85% are either high priority or very high priority. Sometimes you have to look a little bit deeper into these partnerships to see the integration points. Lotus Cars and NFT Pro recently announced a partnership with Ripple to bring automotive NFTs to the XRP ledger. Sounds great, right? Well, who is NFT Pro? NFT Pro is under the umbrella of an organization called Web3 Pro. Web3 Pro has clients and partners such as Ducati, Lamborghini, Adidas, Atari, Circle, Coinbase, the National Science Foundation, which is a governmental entity, uh, Amazon Web Services, Accenture, who does multiple bank integrations across the entire globe. 
You've got Goldman Sachs and you've got JP Morgan continuing to make moves even during um, price stagnation or when prices are low in this market. You've got the head of Onyx and the head of digital assets, uh, the, the digital assets sect of JP Morgan essentially stating that the overall goal is to bring trillions of dollars of assets into decentralized finance so that they can utilize new mechanisms for trading, borrowing, and lending, but with the scale of institutional assets. And on the back of that, Goldman Sachs just executed its first trade of a derivative linked to Ethereum. Now we talk about institutional grade assets or institutional grade custody. Citigroup. Citigroup is a monster. Um, Citigroup partners with Metaco for digital asset custody. Not only digital asset custody, Metaco is a digital asset custody platform, institutional grade. Their platform is called Harmonize. You've got Citigroup literally saying that they're planning to build Metaco, that institutional grade digital asset custody or crypto custody, into the infrastructure of Citigroup. We can go on to Metaco's website. Thousands of digital assets are supported. XRP, you've got DAI, you've got SushiSwap, Uniswap. Polkadot is on here. Um, Tether, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. Run the gamut, ladies and gentlemen. It is happening right in front of our eyes. Moving forward to Northern Trust. Northern Trust is a financial service company headquartered in Chicago, catering to corporations, institutional investors, and ultra high net worth individuals. Well, I wonder what these ultra high net worth individuals are going to have access to. Northern Trust literally just stated that they have merged their traditional security services market group, so the traditional aspects of finance, with their digital assets group, creating this digital assets and financial markets group. It is, it, it's to the point now that they cannot just ignore this space anymore. Uh, they have too much overhead, so it makes sense just to merge the groups because cryptocurrency and digital assets are the first new asset class in hundreds of years. Um, Northern, uh, Northern Trust recently busy as well. Last year, partnering with Standard Chartered to, again, uh, launch a institutional grade cryptocurrency custody platform, which was called Zodia. Now, Zodia recently integrated with an organization called Fireblocks, also dealing with institutional grade cryptocurrency custody. Effective immediately. Now, this was announced in at the end of May of this year. Zodia Custody users will gain access to the Fireblocks network of over 1,000 liquidity partners, trading venues, lending desks, and counterparties. What does Zodia have integrated? You can look. Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Satoshi's Vision. Um, they, have, they support RippleNet. They support XRP. Um, they support Polkadot. They support Algorand. You can see all the integrations right from within their website. Um, that link, so you can play around with it a little bit, is within my article as well. Moving forward, we've got the G7 nations. If you're not aware, the G7 is the group of seven. It's a coalition of seven countries that have the largest and most advanced economies in the world. The United States, Germany, Japan, United Kingdom, France, Italy, and Canada, along with the European Union, talking about cryptocurrencies, digital innovation and payments, talking about a widespread effort to bring cryptocurrencies in or hand in hand, legislation wise with the traditional financial market. And we don't stop there, ladies and gentlemen. We've got McKinsey and Company talking about Metaverse. We know Metaverse is a big buzzword. McKinsey and Company essentially stating that by 2030, the value of the Metaverse could reach $5 trillion. Interesting statistic being that the entire market cap of cryptocurrency in 2021 only reached $3 trillion. If we think that the cryptocurrency market, that the digital asset market, and this is not financial advice, is not going to break all-time highs as a new asset class, I would, I, would, I would just recommend that you kind of revisit some research and revisit all of the organizations that are actually integrating with this space because, in my opinion, digital assets, crypto, DLT, blockchain swallow most of traditional finance. So you can start running some of those numbers in your own head and make your own assumptions about where this space could go. All right, the first United States Crypto Rewards credit card on the American Express network is here. Talked about that a little bit earlier with rewards points and Visa launching Bitcoin cashback cards in Brazil and Argentina in June of uh, 2022. Now, a lot of people talk about, you've probably heard about CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currencies, right? The IMF put out a pretty comprehensive study about the you know cryptocurrencies, digital assets, um, and kind of, uh, you know, the green initiative that all of these larger financial, everybody pretty much has by 2030, 
called Digital Currencies and Energy Consumption. Um, I'll let you do your own research into that. But this is a really great uh, portion here uh, talking about CBDC or central bank digital currency initiatives that have uh, from retail and wholesale that have either launched or are in pilot phase or are in certain different phases of uh, development or testing or maybe they're live. Bahamas and Nigeria launched. Uh, Singapore, Canada, South Africa, the UAE, Canada, uh, China, Ukraine, South Korea uh, are all in pilot phase for retail and wholesale. You can kind of look through here. It's a really great resource. And last but not least, this is a little bit more fun, I guess, here, but Turner Sports committed to NFTs touts Immutable X partnership. Now, Immutable X is obviously a scaling solution for Ethereum, uh, dealing very much so in gamification and NFTs, announcing a partnership with Turner Sports last month. Turner Sports pretty much runs television coverage of things like the NBA, uh, Major League Baseball, NCAA D1 men's basketball, which we all know is pretty big. They deal in the PGA Tour. They deal in PGA.com. Uh, you can obviously, well, TBS, TNT, AT&T, multiple different channels. Um, the purpose of this all is to provide uh, some insight into the adoption that is certainly going on, into the digital economy that is fast approaching for us all, and hopefully to provide a little bit of knowledge for um, for you, the audience, um, so that you can try to help you know try to help you do your own research within these aspects because the mainstream media is not talking about any of this. Um, they are talking about price action and price action solely for the most part. Uh, during bear markets, which we are in right now, or bearish trends in the digital asset space, they will tell you that cryptocurrency is dead. These are all announcements or initiatives that have either come out at the end of May or throughout June. Um, and there was plenty more. I had about 80 different tabs open when I had to narrow it down within the article content and the video content here. Um, and it doesn't just deal in um, fun and gaming. You know, it, it's at the highest levels of government. There are European Union initiatives. There are United States government initiatives that are dealing in proof of concepts of crypto. This Project Phoenix is an example of a funded EU initiative about literally protecting the smart grid, utilizing the Interledger protocol so that it can have inter interconnectivity into different DLT networks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, there will certainly be more to come. Um, I hope to obviously provide more insight into adoption as days, weeks, months come. Uh, and certainly looking forward to you all engaging with the Lighthouse Report and I, you know, hopefully learning a little bit from this. I will talk to you when I talk to you and thank you very, very, very much for watching. Bye.